think it's recording. So Lucy, yes, it is, yeah. is it amazing? Yeah, it's saying it here, but I'm always like, is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> is it really? Can I trust this? <laughs> like, um, but Lucy, thank you so much for joining me for um, another phase. I am super, super excited to be talking to you. Um, I'm all, I've, how I've been doing it is I've been recording the introductions after so you're like using it as a recap because I always get a bit like overexcited and I'm like (laughs) 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 what do I say what do I say uh who am I um so if you could kind of just like open up and just kind of let people know like who you are tell us about yourself and like what you do sure and so thanks for having me I'm Lucy (laughs) Sheridan the world's first and only comparison coach so I appreciate that is possibly one of the most niche job titles in the world um (laughs) ultimately what that means is that everything I do um whether it's a a talk in a school a piece of social media content or seeing private clients everything I do is focused on helping people stop comparing themselves to other people amazing like and like you've been on Oprah you are like um, I've worked with you like you are yeah. just like you're the you're the one that everyone goes to for really stepping into their self-worth and and coming I think also what I want to say actually with the words are like just coming home to themselves oh thank you that's like, well I, <laughs> I received that as an enormous compliment because mm. that is it's interesting tomorrow like people come it's like the thing's never the thing almost like comparison is a trojan horse to something else Mm. so people think like i must stop comparing myself to my colleague i have got to stop comparing myself to my partner's ex yes both things are true Mm. but there's always something behind that which is really the thing to look out look at and that can be worked with like that's the real magic Mm. that's there so comparison is almost like that sharp end of that that arrow that allows you to go deeper and Ooh. really solve um, what's been going on so that yeah. comparison can just do one basically. Yeah. Cause I was listening to your audio book um, the other day, I bought it ages ago and then lockdown happened. So oh, normally I listen you. to the aud- like audio when I'm getting the train and going inside yeah. and everything about and cause I haven't had that. I just haven't been listening to yeah. them. So I was doing, recording my audio book had a, a flash of comparison because <laughs> I, but it's, it was hilarious because I was like, I was like, oh my, on my way to record my audio book, and I'm like, oh my god, Lucy sounds amazing. <laughs> she is so good. How am I going to sound like this? Like, and it's just like this is hilarious. So I'm listening to this. <laughs> Let me <laughs> share a funny present. story with you around that. Yeah. I have always thought I had a slight speech impediment mm. because I am I can be a bit lispy. Yeah. And we sat down to do the to read it. And I said to the production um, person, I was like, by the way, I've got a bit of a speech impediment. I think I observe it. This is how it manifests in how I speak. And he was like, no, you haven't. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I think you'll find. Yeah. Yes, I know my lived experience. But actually, I just speak really fast. And my tongue yeah. can't keep up. Yeah, so I'm the same. have a list there. But what, when I was recording it, just, just being able to slow down made it a really quick experience. Mm. I yeah. only allowed three and a half days. I really need to. Yeah, I, once yeah. you're kind of like in front of the paper and you're just slowing down reading, it just makes it completely different. Which mm. is, was it challenging because I I'm used to kind of not speaking off the cuff. I'm used to speaking conversationally and following a tangent and I'm maybe using an example and mm. making sure that the person there like is really clear and I'm very illustrative in how I speak. Yeah, so that people like things land. But in that scenario, you just got to read what's in, on the page. Like, yeah. let that part of your brain go to sleep. Yeah. Sorry, slight tangent. No, but I think it's helpful for people to hear helpful. that. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> yeah, because I was, I remember, I was like reading it and then we recorded my like recorded mine and then we re-recorded the intro and I was like, I wonder if that's what like they did as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> because you've did. warmed up by then. That's it. I went back and recorded yeah. the intro. Record, correct. Yeah, inside info, it. Inside info. So then yeah, I was like, there you oh. go. <laughs> But when I was listening, like the reason I was saying this, like when I was listening to your audio book, um, I literally was like trying to watch the station, and then I kept like stopping to write things down because oh, I wow. was like, oh, and like we're gonna have to talk about this as well. But just around like comparison, I think there's so many things that people put labels on that themselves that they're, mm-hmm. they're not good at, good at, or it's a fault yeah. or something. And I really love how you frame like comparison as something to be like using it to our advantage, like working with it rather than and like you've got um the comparison t- test 
where people yeah. can find out what the comparison type is. So, yeah. And I was, I was do, actually doing a moon ceremony the other night called like, um, it was called Free Your Mind and it was all about limiting beliefs. Gorgeous. And I think that's the same thing. It's like, it's rather than having that define us, it's like, how can we work with that? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why I wanted to speak to you for like another phase is because yeah. Firstly, like I mentioned you in the book because around like social media and like around in, a ritual for letting go. Um, but um, comparison, people work with the moon. A lot of them are drawn to the moon because of manifestation. They mm-hmm. want to make yeah. things happen, you oh, know, yeah. and also the moon is for self-reflection. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh gosh, I can speak to Lucy because <laughs> when you're manifesting, comparison is something that gets, is one of the mm-hmm. biggest hurdles for people. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's already been done. Yeah. I can't do that. I'm never going to be that good. Like yeah. all of, all of those all of those stories mm-hmm. that come up because it's just your ego being like, just, just stay over here. You it's fine. It. It's fine. Um, but looking at kind of like the waxing moon phase for taking action or mm-hmm. the waning moon phase for letting go and like letting, mm-hmm. using that awareness that maybe mm-hmm. has been highlighted from the full moon of this person's triggering me or this yeah. situation's like a lot and it's stopping me from doing what I want to do. Like yeah. what, um, how c- would you recommend people using ca- comparison to their advantage? Like, have you got any tips or like hacks? Oh yeah. And I think um, what's important too is to recognize, like you said, you can work with it. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you have to end up loving and celebrating the person or the <laughs> yeah. content that is triggering your comparison. That's not the destination. No. You want to get to a place of neutrality of, I just don't think about them anymore. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a lovely coat. That's a lovely child. That's a lovely house, whatever. But it doesn't go any further than that. That's the mm. real aim. When it comes to um, the first steps of working with comparison, it's first of all, all of this must be done with dollops and dollops of self-compassion. Mm. It really must, because don't start by trying to cancel your feelings because that provides yeah. like a double punch. Like I'm comparing, but I shouldn't be comparing. It's like, oh, you know, that's yeah. not helpful. So yeah. the first step is notice what you notice. So what is it, what is it about? that about that person or what is it about seeing people going to places like that mm. that is coming up for you that is coming up for you mm. and I try and use that word instead of trigger mm. because it's just a little lighter in tone yeah. Love and that. if we can be a bit a little lighter in tone it means that we can em- embrace it mm. and more and go further and deeper more quickly too mm. so what is it that's coming up for you well if I'm honest I, I what I notice is that I feel really insecure when I see people going on holiday in summer and I when I really think about it I never prioritize that self-care or answer my own need for adventure mm. and that pees me off or when I compare myself to my partner's ex what I notice coming up for me is that they used to um spend a lot of time at home together and they like really renovated their house together and we don't have kind of like a shared project or a shared interest and that's making me feel like we aren't connected in some way so Mm -hmm. my comparison has little to do with the fact that they converted their kitchen and everything to do with the fact that we can find we could find a different flow we need to find an outlet for us to kind of to connect basically so Mm. notice what you notice because the thing is very rarely ever the thing yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and in that moment, when we get to that insight, even though sometimes it's really confronting, mm. we can first of all get to that place of like, huh, okay, well, that's just me. So you might even, you know, for those of us that are intro- perhaps more spiritually inclined or spiritually curious, let's say, mm. and I think that's where I certainly would place myself, spiritually mm. curious, we kind of decide to put our big toe in shadow work there. Mm. Because what we're doing is we're embracing the parts of ourselves that, Uh, we wouldn't want anyone else to see that we're a bit embarrassed about we break the taboo in that moment we're able to absorb it so to summarize first of all we notice what we notice then we get to the real realization we get to that crystal of insight what's Mm. this really trying to tell me because that person's air miles has zero to do with how i'm feeling right now yeah i'm feeling right now has everything to do with the fact i haven't made this choice for myself or Mm. i don't have a plan for this or this feels out of reach for me then we can move through to them like we kind of go into a totally different room with that door of insight Mm -hmm. and we're then able to be like well what are my first steps to getting where I want to go what does that version of success and I'm using air bunnies here because I think success (laughs) is a really wide term but forgive me let's keep things jargon free Mm -hmm. I also keep jargon free but what does my version of success in that area look like and it's even starting simply journaling on that Pinterest on that 
then allow that to become a plan, which mm. is, I've re- I really want to go places in my career. I really want to mm. go places in this company that I work for. So I am going to like polish up my LinkedIn. I am going to talk to my manager and say, you know what? I would really love to be going to work in that, you know, in our international office within mm. the next two years. Can you help me with a plan to mm. support me to do that? Like I'm all in on this. Yeah. And before we know it, we'll leave. we have an action plan. And from there, we can take steps back to ourselves, but mm. forward yeah. in our version of success too. And that will deeply connect you with yourself, your resources, your life to the point where, again, you kind of see that thing on social media that might have led to a, oh gosh, moment or yeah. going down rabbit hole. And you just scroll on past. Mm. Hear an anecdote about someone that you used to compare yourself to and you go, oh, that's nice. Anyway, what are you doing next week? And mm. it just rolls on. Not because you're arrogant, not because you don't care, but because it just doesn't, it can't get to you. It just mm. can't get in. It's like you put yourself, you kind of think about this visual of like, you know, beekeepers have beekeeper suits. Yeah. Like you just, I love bees, by the way. So yeah. it's no shade to bees. <laughs> but what we do is we put ourselves in a beekeeper suit where actually we've got loads of rooms to move around, but nothing can get in and bother mm. us in that mm. way. And that's really the, the ultimate destination for it. I think what's also really important to bear in mind, Samara, is that sometimes comparison will like you'll we can orbit in and out comparison yeah so, i do yeah. yeah i know we i all, do we all do yeah we all do and like i my job is not to and i do so like let's <laughs> yeah. just have a moment of humility there yeah. um or have a moment of just being real there of course but the intention is to get the orbit to be as long and as elliptical as it possibly can mm. so like man i'm comparing myself i haven't done this for two years what's coming up here mm. Rather than this should be solved, it's right. Oh, right, back it comes. And I think, and you know, I'm sure you've heard this language before, and I've heard it lots um, in kind of the well being scene. And it's not about circling around, we are spiraling around. Mm. So when you come to comparison two years on, like, so my, I'm 37 next week at the time we're recording mm. this, let's say some stuff's coming up for me <clears throat> that I haven't experienced in, in a few years. I'm meeting it as 37 year old me with everything under my belt and in my experience and cleared or healed or not <laughs> yeah. in that moment, not 34 year old me i have mm. got to give credit where credit's due so again really big orbit trying to stretch it out so that a relationship with the comparison changes as well so let me share a little bit with you and we'll perhaps get onto this but if you wanted to um do the comparison test there are different types mm. i used to be a comparison generalist i was a scanner so, so do you change yeah. So, yeah, I think like, you, well, I, so I, I was thinking that when I retook it, I was like, I couldn't remember yeah, it last time. I think we do because we, we meet it with the people we are there and yeah. kind of with what's coming up or, you know, another word, triggers mm. being there. So I used to be a scanner. I was a generalist. I would compare myself to lots of different people in lots of different ways at lots of different times. I was scanning. Do, 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 mm. do, 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 do. That was my kind of state. It is as exhausting as it sounds. Mm. So if you're a scanner as well, I just want to say, Please yeah. feel seen. Yeah, I, I'm a scanner. Yeah. According to the test, I'm a scanner. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't think my I didn't think it was that bad. No, yeah. no, no, no that a scanner's not that a scanner's bad. But you know, yeah. we again we just don't realise. But when we yeah. call it out, yeah, and we can see it, then we know what we're. And what, that's exactly it, darling. That. So I'm an archer now, um, and I'm sure I'll change again. Yeah. So I'm an archer now. And what this means is I compare myself to people I don't know that are far away in one specific way. So almost mm. like there's a bullseye. So um, to use a more general term, strangers on the, maybe like one or two strangers on the internet that I'll never know, that mm. will ne- and they'll never know how much time I spend on their Instagram posts, yeah. <laughs> TikToks, or whatever. Um, I spend lots of or they're like home, DIY, like home set up DIYs. I saw that. Oh yeah, there's not much the I have not noted. Like I could do a quiz on them and that would be quite scary for them to know. Yeah. <laughs> there I am, I'll out it. There I am, yeah. I'm an archer. So it's very yeah. specific in that way. So for, the, for these reasons you're like having that awareness of like oh okay that you know th- this is what's coming up for me in, in this way too it can really set us on the path to mm. like I say having much bigger orbit right now so my um comparison used to be kind of like a low level hum mm. um that would affect me all the time and so I would make I'd be comparing at lunchtime it would still be affecting me in the evening and then that might you know excuse me language piss me off for a bit that mm. week mm. Now my comparison is, <laughs> I must have, listen, darling, I'm a Leo, so I'm going to use this word, but <laughs> my comparison has quite a, a volcanic effect right. on me, and that is, it's hot and it's instant, but ultimately it does dissolve away yeah. quite quickly. So 
So in a moment, I might feel that because I mean, my, I'll speak when my experience of comparison in my body um, is it feels hot. It feels like there's mm. a, a spark of adrenaline and then I can feel quite, ang- it's very emotional. Mm. So I'll kind of first come up with anger and who they think they are and all that horrible shadow stuff, but it's just me. So yeah. I use the word horrible lightly. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I come down to oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, that was really bitchy. Oh gosh, when am I going to get over this? But mm. it's really kind of like, it's, it, it's, it's very combustible in that moment. But all this happens within about four minutes. And then, <laughs> then we, yeah. So it's like, and my minutes. husband will come in and he's like, are you all right? And there I am like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Over <laughs> there. Oh, what are they doing? Going to Bali? Oh, <laughs> how dare they make a million dollars or something like that. And it does like, you know, kind of like, like I was going to, you know, I identify as a witch as um, like lots yeah. of our pals do tomorrow. So I'm not saying like, I think witches get a bad press, as I think we'll agree on, but it's like that cartoony witch. Yeah, from, like the Disney, yeah. the Disney, before we gave it the rebrands, it deserved yeah. it. Deserved, um, excuse me, but it has that weird effect, like Gollum, like grabby kind of like energy with me. Mm. But one of the ways that I come through that is big belly breaths. I flood my system with oxygen, Mm. which brings down the physical sensations, which clears my thoughts and allows me to go from to, huh, that was a bit weird. Glad no one else (laughs) saw that or knew what was going on with me. That and 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 what I'd also say is, of course, the opportunity to comes up to like, right, what's coming up for you? There are some times when I'm just like, that has come up for me, Mm. and it's enough to observe it in the moment. Rather than, right, cancel this afternoon. I've got healing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Not, what? Sorry, Ro, you're not getting a walk today. I've got to go and heal something. Yeah. Like, because it's ongoing and because it's like, it'll always be in like my backpack, you know, emotional baggage, like two <laughs> shoulder straps on with that one. Because it'll always be in my backpack. Mm. It's enough to acknowledge that came up big time. Mm. I'm going to come back to that. But right now, I've got to do the laundry. I yeah. think it's really important we allow ourselves to have the human experience because we are, we're not a project. We're in a, you know, we're not, mm. we are not a personal project necessarily, but we'll each have personal assignments. And you've got to come to those when it feels right. Like I know that I could probably do with a bit of therapy on something that's coming up for me and has been over lockdown. I'm just not in a space to sit and talk about it at the moment. Mm. But I've got a feeling what I kind of count as like my second new year around Sour and October 31st. Yeah. Around October. That's a bit, always a big one for you, isn't it? Yeah, I love that time. When the when the darkness starts to come in, I'll go for the therapy and I'm gonna and it'll feel like it'll feel perfect. Yeah. So I'm not putting it off because I just can't. I'm putting it off because I wanna meet that mm. with the energy that it deserves because wow. my emotional health is really precious and I will not like over I will not um like overlook that basically. Mm. I won't. There's like there's plenty of time. And something I'm also becoming more clear on too, thanks to like working with the moon, um, is that there, you know, we have time to figure things out. It might be, I go to, I mean, hopefully it's a long way away, but I go to my grave with some of this stuff. Mm. You know, it, it's lessened, it's, trans, it's transmuted, some of it's dissolved, but whatever my stuff is in this lifetime, I, it's, I'd have to clear the decks. Mm. And that's given me a lot of peace because it's mm. like, I'm up for it. My assignment is on and I'm committed. But like it, it has to have its place as well in my 3D human being, like deeply rooted experience of being like, you know, a, a, a woman on planet Earth, basically, yeah. or someone who identifies as a woman on planet. And it's under, like you said, it's knowing what your your comparison process is. Yeah. Like the journey, and it yeah. comes up. It comes. It's di- it's different. Because uh, oh, I remember when we were working together. Yeah. When I was having some sessions with you, oh, it's like, it feels like forever ago when I was... Like, yeah, I think it was kind uh, of about four years ago. Yeah, and really I was just like, ti- yeah, or maybe even longer, but yeah, yeah. Ti- tiny little wolf sister, <laughs> it's still, still, <laughs> still over 30, but, um, and I remember being in, I booked in with you for like brand stuff, but then mm. I was like, yeah, no, comparison isn't a thing. And just before our first session, I was like struck with this huge comparison mm. with someone else mm. where I was like, they're they're doing what they want to do full time. Mm. I'm still hairdressing, mm. and like oh, like you said, it's like not fair. Like real kind of, mm. but then the guilt that comes with that. Oh yes, 
yeah. because you're like why am i why am i feeling like that about that other person yeah. i do wish them well but it is all how i see it is always a just a, a mirror for like our potential when we're That's getting exactly that it. it's the frustration in like why yeah. aren't i doing what i deep down even though there's That's maybe it. another part of me that's saying you can't do this like what are you thinking yeah. deep down you know that that's what you can be doing and i i yeah. like comparison comes up for me when i'm tired mm, mm. when i'm burnt out and yeah. i'm like pushing and i'm like everyone's mm. doing this and that's probably where the scanner comes in because i'm like yeah. i i need to rest mm. but i'm resisting it and then mm. looking what everyone else is doing and then that kind mm. of making me feel worse about myself I think that's it is when we're not answering our own needs mm. and then it kind of that has like an emotional whiplash effect as well it's like I mm. need to stand still to regroup and re- replenish but I want to go forward and that has like this whiplashy kind of effect too I also think I noticed that I compare when I'm not connected with my own plan or I don't have a plan yeah. and that's not to say like I must be productive to be successful it's not that no. but if I can just kind of see or kind of feel even in my auric field if I can kind of feel something coming in that like I believe like our ideas are like delivered to us you mm. know for us to kind of collaborate <laughs> with like Elizabeth Gilbert kind of um wrote about big magic if I can feel that coming in like, I'm cool I'm sound it's when I've gone too far off course that it will it will really really rally mm. and also I think when I've been ignoring what I want so a big part yeah. of like the human experience I believe is like allowing yourself to want what you want you know even if other people might not want it and they might judge you for it and by the way no one has to know you can no. keep that completely private yourself yeah. but I know certainly like I've kind of seen if certain people get to a stage of business and they're achieving certain things and I kind of feel left behind I'm using air bunnies as well because what the hell is left behind there's only yeah. your own pace actually <laughs> but then it will really it will really rear its head then and I think Tamara getting getting to that point of um what what am I doing like how is this helping me like how can I celebrate this person or just be all right with what they're doing mm. and come back to myself like what is why what is the mirror showing here getting to that point as quickly as possible is huge in dissolving comparison away there'll be some times when I should probably choose a different way but like I have wallowed in comparison mm. like there's been this kind of like sick attachment to it because whether we like it or not it's uncomfortable mm. it's like it doesn't help us very much most of us too um and it keeps us tremendously stuck but it's familiar mm. and you know and I can stay in this warm bath and not have to get out and do my own work then fine that's what I'll do I'll yeah. have I'll be a little bit bitchy about someone <laughs> Um, to myself because I've got no one to talk to because I live on hill on my own with yeah. my husband but anyway but I'll be a little <laughs> bit bitchy to myself in this moment and have a little bit of judgy pants because then I don't have to get my flip chart out and do some journaling yeah. or have a look at what I want to call in for yeah. myself it's easier and that can, again can be confronting so we have to get as soon as we can get to that point of what's the mirror here what's mm. the real message and st- do some journaling or yeah that's just really like, helpful. like letting it out I think mm. is really helpful yeah and actually one of the things I release to the moon when it's appropriate or even, I mean, if there's like a few grudges or like really like obsessions, cause I'll get a bit obsessive about certain mm. accounts, people to follow. I find myself. What's, um, what's your moon sign? I'm a Libra moon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm actually not that sure about what that says about me or what the potential interpretation is there. Mm. Cause I kind of, I'm a, um, I'm a Leo sun, but Pisces rising, which right. really resonates with me. Yeah. The Pisces rising mm. element. I'm like very tick box in some Leo elements, but like more so tick box in some kind of Pisces mm. elements. Actually, I do feel like that is where I kind of identify. Mm. But when it comes to um, like these kind of comparison, like our, comparison habits and kind of um where they take us like just getting to that point of the mirror I think is so important Mm. yeah it is like and that's the thing it's like that's why I was saying like what's your moon sign because the moon sign is like the nurturing aspect Mm. of us like what we need to feel supported Uh and safe and secure so that's why I was like how does that work but like having that mirror and right. that realization, and then looking yeah. at your moon sign to support that and nurture that as you're moving through through it, yeah, in different ways. Yeah. Um, Stop it, right? Sorry, very <laughs> welcome to have a chat. Uh, Apology, listeners. My golden uh, retriever just wanted to let you know that she's got a tennis ball stuck under the sofa. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's like, "Come on, mum, help me." <laughs> um, but yeah, like I think moons. Um, when we are being, when things are being. When, 
when things are being brought to our attention, so mm. not, not saying triggered, like yeah. when things are being brought to our attention, it is like, how can we nurture, not to wrap ourselves up in cotton wool, mm. but also mm. wallowing is, it's kind of fake nurturing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. And that's the thing. Um, like you say, it's kind of, you, it doesn't serve us ultimately, mm. like you say, like anything fake, mostly, apart from my fake stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think like with like a Libra moon, like a Libra moon as your natal moon can be about like your relationships, Mm. like that safety and that harmony, but also being in nice surroundings. I mean, like look at your house. (laughs) Yeah. It's like Libra is like Venusian, like it's that Venus energy like coming through. Um, And just like, yeah, I guess seeing like what, helping to see, using that lens as like what's important for you. Yeah, something, and sorry, I meant to just mention there, like, because I went off another point, not not there for me, um, was around something I'll often release to the moon. Yes. Is around grudges or obsessions of the Mm. people. So um, please let me like release my obsession with Zoe from school. Yeah. Like, please let me get off social media and stop looking at this online shop. Mm-hmm. you know and comparing myself in that way and I will give that to moon as well and there'll be sometimes I'm like hi moon here I am again with my obsession <laughs> Zoe from school yeah. um if I could just ask you to try a little harder to take this away I'd really appreciate it thanks so much XOXO, yeah <laughs> I love that and like what would you your like what are your moon practices like is mm. do you are you like a full moon girl or a new moon girl mm. or do you like to work with all the different phases gosh do you know it's it's something which has kind of ebbed and flowed, mm. which I'm sure the moon loves. Of course. Um, like it's been the <laughs> title. Um, it's something that's ebbed and flowed over the last few years or so. Um, and I used to be almost like devout in it, like, oh, it's waning. Okay, so, all oh, right. And it, was, it became like a, a, almost like a weekly, a very regular practice. I find myself yeah. Googling things most mornings. In recent years, it's loosened somewhat. So I think my moon practice is probably not as potent as it could or should be. And mm-hmm. it follows a few principles because my approach to kind of my spiritual practice, again, being spiritually curious is showing up is, is part of it. Showing up can of sometimes course. be the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so on, when I'm kind of, when I'm, um, so the, to add, honest answer to those questions, my moon practice is fairly consistent and I will use it and I do the same thing every, every time which is I'll make a list of things I'm grateful for and I want to hold on to Mm -hmm. things I want to release. Hello, grudge with Zoe from school. (laughs) Uh, Things I want to release, whether it's like money blocks or, you know, whatever it is, Mm. physical, tangible, otherwise, and then things I want to call in and manifest. And whether it's kind of under a new moon or a full moon, I'll kind of perhaps put a bias on, you know, like uh, when I'm going hard on manifest, I'm like, right, okay, that's going to be a longer list kind of thing. And that's something that I do, um, sometimes I'm a bit late sometimes a bit early but I will try and do that exactly on the day Mm -hmm. and even at the time that I can try and stay kind of curious enough and clear enough around that because I kind of feel like my relationship with the moon like everyone's will be totally different but I do think that one of the things that we all have in common is that she'll just she's there to see where we see how we're showing up Mm -hmm. not to test us or assess us no she's there to say how can I help what do you need Mm. is really how I feel like that's the major download I get whenever I speak to the moon Mm. really or whenever I'm kind of communicating in that way so that is that's the that's what I do every every two weeks every moon and you know at the very least that uh, you know if you do that every month or you know as often as those you know a fuller new moons apply Mm. then you're checking in with yourself 24 times a year that's a big tip in terms of like being deeply connected with yourself Mm -hmm. actually definitely Um, when I when I need to call in the big dogs, yeah. <laughs> so, for example, when I was manifesting this house, mm-hmm. and more than that, trying to earn the money on planet Earth for the deposit for the house, yeah. Um, I had like I had I was using candle magic, and sex magic, and the moon. Mm-hmm. So that I had to bring in the big dogs on. Amazing, because I was like, "What was your process? People are going to yeah. want to know." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um a lot of a lot of sex magic around that were you doing that with Al was he down with actually mostly on my own yeah um because I kind of felt like I can do this for both of us yeah (laughs) 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 Um, (laughs) Um, but in when when I'm manifesting something or, or sometimes like um when I just feel like you know, there are some moons that touch us more deeply and that we feel a sense of being called to them, almost like being called to a temple in a, a past life. Mm. So when that's the case, I might kind of um, light all of my candles, even my really posh, my Elton John 
<laughs> you know, I might light all of my candles and then get my A3 pad out, new page, and then I'll light my Jupiter candle mm-hmm. and I have a moon candle as well. One's very dark purple, one's very dark blue. And I'll light those as I complete the ritual. And then I might even put on some like pagan music or some maybe, um, uh, what the, what, oh my gosh, what's that thing I always listen to? Uh, Solfeggio rhythms. Okay. Uh, I put on a solfeggio rhythm. What uh, are they? I've never heard that. So, so solfeggio rhythms are basi- basically, she said, then t- 10 minutes to describe it. So, yeah. Solfeggio, <laughs> so solfeggio rhythms are, um, they are pieces of music which are tuned to different hertz frequencies. So, for example, um, the and so I think, it's, oh God, don't at me if I get this wrong because I've not had a coffee yet. <laughs> I think something like um, 472. I know I'm wrong with that. So, mm. um, don't at me. I know I'm in yeah. it. 472 hertz is, for example, the rhythm of Earth, but it, it creates, it has the vibration, the frequency mm. that's there. So I'll maybe put kind of like unconditional love on, and that'll be like 800 hertz or something like that. Yeah. Again, so is it I like binaural beats? Yeah, similar to, yeah. similar to. Um, possibly exactly the same, actually. I just <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> from a solfeggio rhythms. But I'll, if you kind of type in healing to Spotify there or Kundalini Yoga to Spotify, there's some mm. incredible and um, like deeply connecting, deeply moving and shifting um, uh, playlists on there. So I'll put those on too. And then I'll go in hard on my, um, go in hard on the, on the list, so to yeah. speak. And then I might even kind of pull a, um, do a, a spread. Mm. to do it do a spread as well which I think will um really help and that just really centers my energy mm. around that and I and I basically kind of and then I'll read those out to the moon like go outside to the moon and read those out we we had um on the I think it was on Monday was it a uh, Tuesday the full moon like this week as we're speaking Monday uh, Monday yeah, yeah that's right um on Monday night um the moon, we there's a reservoir down the valley um where our house is and the moon just kind of came up over one of the hills and then like just poured silver onto the water and it looked Whoa. like liquid mercury and I just had like this moment of just I was just I was thinking I was like oh yeah it's full moon I was like but I'll do my list and then in that moment I just said thank you yeah and it just stood there like under her light and then our house is Victorian and there used to be what they called a night garden here I don't know if you've heard of a night garden but this yeah. is a garden that's deliberately like white petals light blue petals like very light pink petals so that the moon would catch it and they provide light from the garden in the at night time. Wow, I've never these, even heard of that. That's amazing. Like, we're like we, we, we revamping our garden. No, right, now. exactly. Instantly, Everyone instantly. gets the upgrade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And what was amazing, we have these, they're not called daisies, they've got a proper name, but don't know what they are. We mm. have these enormous daisies in the, um, in like lots of them up, and very tall mm. at the moment, I've been nearly as tall as me um, at the moment in the garden. And the moon kind of caught them too. And it was almost like daylight, but moonlight. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm just going to let this, I'm just going to be completely enveloped in this. I'm just mm. going to say thank you. Um, so all that to say, my moon... Um, I think the moon is all right with me keeping a routine, which de- gen- it tends to flex. Mm-hmm. So I'm present with it and always aware of when they're kind of coming up. Even if I'm like, is it full or new? What am I doing at the moment? You know, yeah. and I'll quickly Google it. Um, but it can be more intensive. And, and I guess it's always intentional, but perhaps more intensely intentional, depending on um, what my personal needs are as yeah. well. Something I've started to do as well this year which I think I might I'm probably really behind on this and people are like well uh, that's a bit selfish you're a narcissist but I've started to include like the world excuse me goodness windy pop sorry I've started to include like the world in my practice like I pray for healing in this area how's that narcissistic okay. Well, I, no, I think like, because I haven't been doing it. Oh, you haven't been, been doing it. Like, oh, okay. I'm great <laughs> okay. at my coffee maker. You're a complete <laughs> narcissist now, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've been very loose on that. Yeah. So I've always kind of said, like, you know, I'm manifesting peace for everyone that needs more peace. Mm. But obviously, don't want to get in people's faces about what their manifestations no. are. But I've really gone really specific. Like, I really hope that that person that, you know, launched that charity, like, gets mm. so much abundance and just try to just, like, increase out the 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 zorb yeah. of the practice there um that kind of yeah that just feels like an an, an important extra add-on mm. for me at the moment but also i think from that space of like manifesting more for yourself or the closer your closer community yeah. that is manifesting peace for the world yeah yeah like it's the ripple yeah. effect isn't it and yeah, i think if, effect, if, when yeah. we're when we're healed or the clo- or we're supporting the people around us that's what mm. like us actually being on the ground rather than like universe 
it's like world peace like moon world peace like it's yeah. like it's the little the little yeah. things isn't it that also yeah. are both work the together. big players yeah exactly yeah. um and one of the questions that I like ask everybody like on this is like if you could go back to another phase in your life when would it be and it yeah. could just be a time to like just enjoy it or like to give yourself a message oh what gosh how long have you got um <laughs> what I would say is I think it would be going back to um like 17 slash just turned 18 year old me who was about to go into like the first big heartbreak mm. that if I'm honest has really left kind of like vapor trails over my life like wow. it really has and I realize now it's like you know with the perspective of it being like nearly 20 years ago that it could have been anyone it mm. was what happened and how I processed it or didn't process it or you know, be, you know, that time that, you know, set the course for what happened next. But I just wish I could go back and just kind of say, don't lose yourself to this. Like, mm. I, mean, I maybe wouldn't have understood like what it is to grow through something back then because I was very, like, I didn't really discover, like, like I say, I didn't become spiritually curious until about, say, 10, 12 years ago. Mm. But I wish I could go back to then and just kind of Put just in the, with like with the biggest big sister energy like yeah. grab her shoulders and be like look at me stop it yeah <laughs> like stop pretending you're not devastated mm. you know stop suppressing this um stop you know not reaching out stop feeling like you can't talk about it like mm. find people that you can I think that would have helped a lot and I think yeah the minute um I heard that question it, it had to go about that because you know people kind of um you know I think inner child work is a really precious and um, beautiful um, practice in the self-development kind of toolbox that we have there. When I'm thinking inner child, I'm not just thinking nine-year-old, I'm thinking 17, 18-year-old mm. Lucy. Like what the effect that had over my adulthood, and I still find re that will like orbit in every so yeah. often, was ca like c cataclysmic. I don't know if we use that word correctly, but big. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it was it's proper huge. Big. It was proper big, babe, <laughs> proper big. And so going back to that phase, I think, and just allowing myself to take myself seriously, even if I felt like others weren't, I felt mm. like really dismissed and misunderstood. And like, like other people, I, I felt like I wasn't like living in the same world as other people, you know, mm. and actually realized all of those feelings were valid. I just didn't have an outlet for them. Yeah. So yeah, it would definitely need Whoa. to go back there. I, and I've even as you're saying it, I was getting full body like goosebumps and tingles thinking there'll be someone that's listening to that now that might not be 17, yeah. but they need, they will need to hear. Yeah. That. Yeah. And like, yeah, I feel like I'm going to be like my next big birthday is 40. That's not, you know, please God may live to see it. That's where kind of like, you know, that's what's coming and it still hangs around. It still visits mm. me in dreams. It's, I journal on it a lot and, you know, I've had countless like readings about it and never really got to an answer apart from, I think the answer is still to be revealed. Mm. Yeah. So go on. Oh, no, what were you going to say? You go. I was going to say, yeah. So if you're feeling like, why can't I forget them? Or that happened ages ago. It's like, yeah, welcome to the human race. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I am still not over it in lots yeah. of different ways. And I think sometimes with those, with certain relationships in our lives that whether we're still in them or not, I do think there's a past life connection because it's that yeah. strong. Yes. That, yeah. like, and I, when I'm doing tarot readings for people, that mm. comes up a lot. It's like, why can't mm. I move on? Why can't I yeah. move on from that? But there's something in, and a lot of the time it's more, that they're, they're, it's like, will I meet anyone else? Like they're still holding mm. that candle mm. for that other person yeah. and yeah. comparing. That's it. Darling. But it's like having that kind of awareness of like, well, maybe they're, they're there to teach you something. And I think that's it. I've been able over time to, like I say, like, what was that situation trying? Well, no, what mm. was that situation? Not trying. What was it teaching me? How does it continue to teach me? And that's made it easier to separate it from me and them. Mm. And that's there. But yeah, I mean, that's, and by the way, I'm, I would love to say, and because it's true, I'm really happily married. So yeah, of course, like yeah. Both no, things, yeah. Oh yeah. No. What, I mean, what I mean is both things can be true. Yeah. What the, the person I came into this happy relationship with is still processing that, but mm -hmm. it isn't affecting my current relationship no. and hasn't done. Um, but it's like both things can be true. And I think yeah. that's something I've kind of, that I think that was part of like 
you know, the trip up for me is like, I can't, until I process this, I can't do that. And it's like, mm. oh, absolutely the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think people can overthink things and question it. Yeah. But like you said, you can be happy, but still be, um, you have that like a, a scar that you yes. see yeah that's, that's a really that, good that that time. At it, yeah. oh it's like yeah it's still there i'm in mm. this completely different situation i'm mm. happy but that that little it's yeah. still healing like there's still every yeah. now and again it, like you catch it that's exactly that you it comes it up perfectly yeah mm. um oh, i was gonna say something but i completely forgot it's completely gone oh it's so annoying all right we were talking about um phases to go back to past phases lives, to go back to past lives. lives i was just thinking just like the those experiences of kind of um our past life like that you wouldn't be in that you wouldn't be with mm. our now if that hadn't mm. happened as exactly. well that's the other yeah, that's the other thing isn't it like yeah that's these it. things everything does happen for a reason oh yeah and it's it's only i say it's only when you get there you can look mm. back at oh i followed I followed all the breadcrumbs to this yeah. moment, all of them. Yeah. yeah. I've just remembered that. I think, you know how you were saying you would say to your 17 year old self, like that what you're feeling is valid. Yeah. I kind of feel like that's why maybe don't make me put this in. Yeah. Yeah. It, it feels like that may be why you are so fierce about mm. making sure that other pe people feel seen and heard and represented. Oh gosh, I'd not thought that really resonates to Mara. Mm. That really, really, really resonates. Yeah. Cause and I think that that's, I do say that lots of people like, as don't cancel your feelings. You yeah. don't have to like, don't ever. Yeah, okay, literally, like, it's like a cold shower. Like, oh, I know me, it's like, oh. Yeah, like, I think that really resonates because mm. it's like, comes from a place of empathy, not yeah. instruction. Of course. Yeah, that really resonates. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this <laughs> golden nugget. Um, but for anybody who is like, because I'm, I always think like, who doesn't know Lucy? Like everyone doesn't know Lucy. Like, <laughs> oh God, but, I'm hitting that LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm like, hitting that right now. <laughs> but if for anyone like, where can they find you? And also, what you? Oh no, rewind. Like, what's coming up up next for you? What do people need yeah. to know about? What's coming up next? So, well, I I'm gonna do so. I'll answer that question as clearly as I can do. I'm still in planning mode at the moment, mm. but something I'm really keen to do is I have a social media program called The Good Gram. And it's basically a social media confidence course. And yeah. I, I did it last year and I really want to do it again. So we'll do that in October. But what's coming up for me is I'm it's like in big ass integration mode, not because I'm grandiose and I'm so important. I have so much to learn and integrate. It's really, <laughs> there's just been a lot. Mm. So what's coming, what, what I'm working on is kind of like not, can, maintaining what has been happening and like the abundance that's there, the lessons that are there integrating them properly mm. and then getting my backpack on to go somewhere different so i'd love to say like i'm launching this i'm launching that yeah. and hold on to your broomsticks i'm doing this as well but i'm really not babes yeah um so <laughs> but i think that's just again that, that's something that i really advocate like the the going inward like that is the the next phase exactly. that's the next phase for you. it isn't always like onto the next thing onto the next thing because yeah. again that's not sustainable no and that's it like we need i know you and i share a lot in common a lot of the same beliefs and values but something I, one of the main things i think you and i share is we're here for the long game yeah <laughs> so it's like i want to be like you know if it's in god's plan i want this to be a and i use the term god very generally yeah. um i want to be here doing this when i'm a really old lady mm. you know i want to open like you know summer schools for kids to come and like be themselves and it'd be yeah. like for uh, there's so much I want to do um and I I insist on taking my time to do it because mm. it's like I just want to enjoy the road I've been I've got quite a bit of sag in my chart I'm very like <laughs> counter counter on the next thing and I just need to I need to be that Leo lion lying under the trees in, yeah. the, in the sunshine for a bit Oh, I love that. Um, I'm just having that visualization. That's going to be you for the next, for your week off. Yes, that's <laughs> it. Just flicking my tail. Just flicking my tail. Um, and where can people find you? I think the best place I suggest is on the gram. So mm. I'm at Lucy Sheridan and I'm sharing. I don't think you're going to get me on Surreals. Let me just tell you that now. <laughs> But um, when it comes to the gram, like I'm on there every day sharing comparison free advice, giving workshops or, um, you know, sharing journal prompts that you can actually start to use like immediately. Um, mm. So if you'd like that in your feed, please come and find me. Yeah. And then like people, you've got your website and then also you've got your book, The Comparison Cure. Yes. And the, if anyone is listening and they're like, what what comparison type am I like, out of curiosity oh yeah if you, yeah okay <laughs> so the, the scanner the scout the archer or the squirrel 
um go to my um go to Inst go to my instagram lucy sheridan if you go to my bio it says take the comparison quiz mm -hmm. and you'll get an immediate answer and then a couple of days later i'll send you a full report because it's a bit like a reading actually it's not mm, just yeah. three bullet points enjoy I've written these specifically for your type and it even has like some coaching next steps on it for you as well. So one to hold on to, to download and mm, keep. Yeah, yeah, it's well worth it. Yeah, I love <laughs> love doing mine and reading mine. Oh, um, thank you, babe. Well, and yeah, and like I recommend, definitely recommend getting the audio book. I'd say get the audio book because then you get to listen to Lucy. Oh, thanks, love. You. Me like, and my big vowel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Lucy. Oh, Tamara, it's been amazing. And um, thank you so much. Just so blessed to have you in my life. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I love you too, babe. <laughs>